Does Amazon withhold some amount from each of your bi-monthly deposits? Do you want to be able to keep track of that in QuickBooks? Well, this video will show you how to do one adjustment at the very beginning so your unavailable balance can always match the amount on the Amazon statement. If you have any questions about this topic, you can leave them in the comments section below and I'll do my best to help you. And of course, if you feel the video helped you, I hope you will click like and don't forget to subscribe to get updates on new videos that come out all the time. What is the unavailable balance that's listed on your bi-monthly Amazon deposit statement? It's an amount that Amazon withholds and will pay you in the next statement. It is technically a current asset like a receivable because you will receive it in the future. The bottom of the statement shows the amount withheld until the next statement and the top of the statement shows the amount from last time released and added to the payout on the current statement. The balance of the asset account should equal the amount that is receivable in the future, which means the amount on your trial balance should always be equal to the amount at the bottom of the most recent statement. So here we have the example statement. This is the amount that they released from last time that you actually added to the deposit as a positive number. And on the bottom of the statement is the amount they're actually withholding till next time. That's the amount that really should show in the account unavailable balance in your QuickBooks records. But you see, after we recorded our deposit, what was showing in the unavailable balance was not the amount that you will receive. It was an incorrect amount. It's actually currently showing the difference between the unavailable uh, amount that was withheld last statement and the unavailable amount that was withheld this statement. So if you followed along step by step, you have the difference between the amount released from last time and the amount withheld this time. But it's better to actually have it show the amount you're expecting to receive in the next statement. You will also notice it's on the credit side. So if it's an asset that you expect to receive and it's on the credit side, you should just know that all that means is that it's a negative number. But we'll deal with that in a second. So how do you get the unavailable amount in your QuickBooks records to actually equal the amount you're going to receive in the next statement. Well, it would be equal to that amount receivable if you actually started these procedures at the very beginning when you opened your Amazon store. In other words, in your very first statement, the amount withheld from last time would be zero because there would be no last time. So, if nothing from last time would be added to the deposit, that means the amount withheld this time on this statement would be the amount you subtract from the deposit and the amount that would be in the unavailable balance asset account. But now, you are not starting from zero, or let's assume that you're not starting from zero because you have been recording things and then you learn and then you watch these this video series and learn how to do it so what if you're not starting from zero what if you have the amount that we have now well how do you get it to match very simple you only have to adjust it one time and if you make a simple journal entry to bring it to the current balance then all you have to do is follow our procedures for deposits forever going forward. 
and then it will match every time and show you the real unavailable balance that you can expect to receive in the next statement. In other words, this is the amount that it should be because that's the amount at the bottom that you expect to receive in the next statement. However, this is what it is in our current records. If we look at our trial balance now, it's showing the difference between the beginning and ending of last statement because we didn't start these procedures at the very beginning when you open your store. We just started doing it in the middle so it's showing the difference. It's not really showing the amount you're going to receive. So what you have to do is find the difference. And of course, the amount in our uh, trial balance now is actually a negative number. That's why it's on the credit side instead of the debit side. So if, if you remember your elementary school math, when you find the difference between a positive and negative number, you learned in elementary school, you have to add them together. But anyway, this is the amount of the adjustment. And all you have to do is adjust it once, and it will be correct every time going forward if you follow our deposit procedures. So we're going to make a journal entry, and the balancing account is the opening balance equity account. So here's the trial balance in our QuickBooks online account. It's a negative 942.25 because it's on the credit side. And the receivable amount should really be on the debit side. So we will make a journal entry for this amount. So we click New. We go over to where it says Journal Entry. And the proper date of the journal entry should really be the day that you started business because it's really setting it up and preparing. But anyway, the numbers will work out right. Now, the account to debit is the unavailable balance. And the unavailable balance we will debit for $10,600.02. And the balancing credit is the account that we use for all of our balancing entries when we do our setup. Opening balance equity, $10,602. When we click Save and Close, now you can see the unavailable balance now reflects the actual amount that we expect to receive in our next payout from the next bi-monthly deposit. And as you can see, that was the amount that they actually gave us, oh, excuse me, that they actually withheld from April 3rd that we expect to receive, or at least some of it, in the next deposit from Amazon.